All right, uh, Unity Spotlight time. So we're gonna be installing one of these on a Dodge Charger. And I just wanted to make a video of that because there's not one good video on YouTube showing how to uh, how to install one of these on a Charger. There's one guy who kind of shows him doing it on a, on a pickup truck, which is, uh, which is a good video and that's pretty much one of the only install videos on YouTube. Um, Unity also posted the video showing the original like uh, 1980s version or 60s or 70s whenever the hell it was made and um, that's that's an interesting video to watch as well the installation process is pretty much the same but um, I just wanted to explain how exactly these things work and uh, how they install on the cars so basically they are vehicle specific contrary to popular belief and claim you cannot just pull one off of one car and install it on another unless it's the exact same um, unity does however make um, a, uni a universal uh, universal ones um, which is to say that this bushing here where it fits into the mounting bracket uh, is what determines its degrees of rotation so I can show you that this is where it slides into the mounting bracket this is the one for the Crown Vic 99 up until you know 2011 and this one actually goes inside the car under the the pillar trim and on the outside you just have a little black metal plate that kind of screws over and the reason for that is because the door closes over the a pillar if you were to look at uh, if you were to look at the the pillar of the crown vic and a lot of other ford cars are like that um, some pickup trucks it actually has to go on the door itself so when you open the door the light's going to swing out with it um, but again, it all depends on what kind of car you have. For the Dodge Charger, the bracket simply goes on the A-pillar and goes right through. That's all there is to it. So, when Unity designs these, um, number one, you must have the vehicle-specific mounting bracket. Number two, search and see if there's a, a correct spotlight part number for it. The only real parts that are completely interchangeable are the handle and the light heads and uh, the post assembly. The, sh the shaft... Um, and the tubing are, are pretty much vehicle specific. So that is something to, uh, to watch out for. As I say, the ones that are, that are universal or generic have this bushing where it can rotate freely up and down the shaft and it clamps inside of the, uh, the mounting bracket. And then when you're installing it, you set it to, where, uh, to, where, to how you want it to rotate. And the way you do that is by loosening everything. You, know, you turn it to one way, you tighten down the um, the, the mounting bracket and then you can turn it the other way and tighten down the, the clamp on, on the head post. Um, so that's how that's done. For the vehicle specific, specific ones you pretty much just install it, tighten everything down and it, it's preset to where it can rotate. Um, no you cannot mix and match left and right sides. Um, so just if you don't know what you're doing just get one from the exact same car you're going to be putting it on or you know order a brand new one. However they are extremely expensive. Um, Two things to point out are the older ones versus the newer ones. As I will try to show here, this is an example of an older one, you can previous version. Um, it, it has a, a bolt or a screw here and it kind of squeezes the, uh, the outer tubing and that's how that tightens down. The other one has a set screw here and you also have this little nice line that they've added. Um, also, if you look at the, the end of the shaft, this one is insulated with paper. So, quite an older one. Uh, try and show that there. It's paper. This one's actually broken. This is where they always break the uh, the end point here because they're forced or they're removed improperly. This one is insulated with plastic. Okay, so this one's insulated with plastic. And here's an example of one that's extremely worn. So that's the flat spot where the little wedge nut uh, catches it. And you can see that uh, the notch here is starting to crack a little bit. I don't know if it will come up on the camera, but it's also very worn. So if you're going to be buying one of these or pulling one off of a car, take the handle off, look at the, the end of the shaft, and inspect what kind of condition it's in. If it looks like this, you know, that's, that's a good one. If it looks like this, it's, it's shit, and uh, it doesn't have very much life left in it anyway. So as I say, the, the mounting bracket for this one, see this is a 253, it's for the Dodger Charger, 
L left hand side, R or RH right hand side. Um, what else? What else? Okay, here's the handle. And this is going to be interesting. I'm going to try to show you inside here. See, there's three points that this thing secures from. One is this wedge nut. That's what holds the, um, the shaft in place, so this part does not move at all. The only part that moves is this outer tubing, and it stops where this notching hits this little, this little key or this little wedge inside the handle. Um, I believe the handles are all the same, and then just the notching on the tube is what determines the degrees of rotation. And they do that so that it's ideal for the vehicle, so it doesn't, you know, knock into the mirror or the, the windshield or whatever. And the other thing is the key down in there. I'll try and get a light in here. But uh, you can kind of see it at the back. So I'm trying to rotate it, and that's what catches the shaft to, uh, to rotate it. I don't know if I can get it on video, but it's way, it's way down in there, and as you turn the handle, it turns around, and it catches this guy here, and that's what turns the, uh, the piece on the head post. As I say, this one's broken, you can see it it's snapped off, but um, there's actually one tube on the outside, another tube on the inside, and then a third tube within that, which is what rotates, and then this in turn rotates. There's a little gear assembly in here, you can take the screw off carefully, because you can see this one snaps, and um, that's what allows you to put some grease in there in the gear assembly. Um, a very, very finicky design, a lot of little quirks and moving parts and, and things to be aware of, uh, and things that need maintenance, but um, when taken care of and installed properly, they work and they last for a very long time. Um, Unity's been making these since the 1930s, I believe, um, and they were at one time very common to have on your car, because cars were very shittily made, and the lights were not very powerful, and people were driving into trees and deers and shit at night, so to have a spotlight on your car was a very common uh, feature. Um, and then of course, you know, they became iconic for, for police cars and such for um, seeing illumination at night and looking for addresses and that kind of thing. So they were actually meant for just, you know, regular everyday cars before they started being used on, uh, on emergency vehicles. Um, still you'll see a lot of guys that have trucks and things uh, will install these for working at night. They're extremely helpful. The other thing is the light heads themselves. There's a couple different flavors that they come in. This is the very plain black round one. Um, you know, no logo or anything on the back. They do come in the, in chrome. It's not it's not metal. It's actually plastic that uh, they put into or chambering you know, fire metallic particles of it, and that's how you achieve that plastified chrome, which is actually this one over here. However, this one has the uh, nice Unity badge on the back, 225-380. That's what this. Uh, that's what this one's called. That, that one has a part number as well. It's, uh, what is it? Is it stamped on there? The SO4. Yeah. That's what that is. Um, I like this one better. These ones come in black too. Um, but this one just looks a little bit nicer. That's about it. This one has three screws on it. The other one just has one at the bottom and it, it comes off. Um, the bulb inside, this is a little automotive H3 bulb, you just take that bulb out, it comes right out and you can change it. This is a plastic lens cover, um, Oftentimes you'll see these all nasty yellow and that's because the, uh, the UV from the sun rots it out. So, you know, after 20 years that'll happen. This one is just a complete glass uh, sealed beam, the bulb is effectively the same thing, um, it's just, you know, a different style. Very old and retro looking. I don't like it. The best thing to do is, you know, put an LED in this. Way more powerful, draws significantly less power, and uh, it's, it's just a better thing all around. In my opinion, all of them should have LEDs. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be changing it out and installing the LED before I install mine. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I think I covered just about everything that I learned in my search for how these go together. So again, the main things to, to look for when you're 
in the installing one is that you have the correct mounting bracket and the correct spotlight itself. You have to get the, the spotlight from the same car. Um, search the Unity website. It's a little bit weird. They're, they're working on it. They're updating their site um, and, the, and the search system is getting better. Um, but to go on the website and search for the, the part numbers for your, for your specific car. And um, if you're picking one of these up from a guy who, who pulled it off another car, really make sure that the mounting bracket and the, um, and the actual light itself did come from the same car, and check it. Look at, uh, ask for pictures, or look at the, the end of the shaft, make sure it's not worn or, or busted in, in any capacity. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess the next part of the video will be showing how, how this is actually installed. Basically, there's no there's no way around it. You just drill a, a fucking half inch hole through your car. That's that's really all there is to it. Um, when you get the mounting kit, obviously there's some parts that you're going to need if you're pulling this off of a, of another car. Um, you, you need a drill a drill bushing, which is effectively this. Um, this is actually just the, the shaft part of a big industrial wheel, and it happens to be the right size. Um, to, to go into the mounting bracket. This one's a bit smaller, but when you get it, it comes with a drill bushing, and the, the purpose of that is so that the drill bit can go through here and not catch the edge of the bracket and give you a clean uh, clean guidance into into the pillar. So if you don't have that, you know, not a not the end of the world, just try and get a, a diameter of pipe um, that A, fits into the mounting bracket securely, and B, your half inch bit will, uh, will go through nicely. Um, when you're doing the install, you know, don't just grab any old rusty ass bit that you have lying around in your drawer. Just, you know, go to Home Depot, buy a brand new sharp bit, not a, a cheap one, you know, get a good one. You know, the extra 10 or 20 bucks or whatever the hell it costs you is worth it uh, versus using a dull ass bit and it catching and ripping the fucking bracket out or, you know, just not going well for you. So get get a new get a new bit but I'll, I'll cover that in the, in the installation video so as I say the, the parts that you're really gonna need are the drill bushing and most of these go in with regular metal screws however for the Dodge Charger and a lot of other cars they've uh, they've come up with uh, well I think it's the car manufacturers that specify they want them to be installed with rivet nuts or rivet nuts and effectively what that is is, uh, I'll show you some here. These little guys, and it's a rivet that's that's threaded. Um, for the the charger, it happens to be M5. That's what they call for. And this goes. You drill a hole. This goes in, and you can you can install this without a tool. You just put a bolt in there with a nut. And you tighten it down, and that'll that'll wedge it. And this kind of flares out, and it grabs the metal. And um, when I first read of that, I was a little skeptical, um, but it is a very, very good way to attach it. You can also get a tool like this, which effectively does the same thing. You twist this and it backs out. It, this is the best thing to have. You don't need a fancy, wildly expensive one. You know, this thing probably cost me 20 or 30 bucks, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good tool for what it is. It does come with, uh, you know, some extra sizes of of threaded uh, ends here, but the M5 machine thread is what you're going to need. Um, as for screws, I got these. These are pin and hex security screws, Torx bit, and I did a, a dry run of this first. I just took a piece of metal and I put it in a little jig bracket I made and I did a, uh, a mock installation. and. I tighten these down until they broke to see what would be the failing point. The uh, the riv nut, the threads would just pull out if the head would snap off. And let me tell you, I got some significant uh, force on there, and it was the head that popped off and it broke clean uh, right at the top. So I'm more than confident that uh, this is a good way to to install it. You know. I wanted to, to try it out first before, because I've never installed one of these before. I wanted to see how uh, how this all went together and get a feel for it. 
which is something I recommend you do as well if you're installing this for the first time. Just take a piece of metal, you know, not very thick, um, screw it between a little wood bracket and drill in your bracket and, you know, do some, do some test runs on it. So I did do that and it all went together well. One, one thing that I will do is when I'm putting the bracket on, I'll first put it in with just regular metal screws. I'll drill the hole and then after I'll put in the, the rib nuts. The reason for that being is that the drill bit can catch the bracket and pull it right out. And if that happens, you don't want it to, to deform or at worst pull out the largest size hole because then you know you're pretty much uh, up shit's creek with a turd for a paddle so I would rather that it pulls out a screw of a smaller hole that I can then widen to uh, to the final size of, of the rib nut so that's that's one installation to, but again I'll, I'll cover that in in the installation video when I do that so I think I pretty much covered everything um, as I say, get a brand new drill bit, go slowly, don't try and force it in there because it does tend to want to catch. Um, you are going on an angle, so your hole ends up coming out like an oval. Um, but the, the bracket and the drill bushing are your guide. Um, this one obviously, like I say, it's for Crown Vic. It would, uh, the installation process is a little bit different, but for the, uh, the Dodge Charger one, put in the drill bushing, drill in the hole, and that's effectively it. So. The, the points in order to go slow it can take you know 10-15 minutes if that's it you know so be it spray some lubricant in there and, and go slowly use a use a drill with an adjustable chuck so that it will you know it'll slip um, versus pulling pulling at the metal so that's uh, that's it for now I don't know if we're gonna do two separate videos this one kind of dragged on for a bit but I'd rather give more information than necessary than just glaze over it like a lot of other people do, and then you have people asking you questions that uh, that should have been covered in the video. But do do leave a comment if uh, a you know more about these things, or b you uh, you have any other questions. So that's it for now, and uh, the next video will be drilling the half inch fucking hole in the car. All right, so spotlight installation time. Got the. Template here. It's a Dodge Charger 2006 up until, well, I think they're all the same now, up until 2017 and until they changed the, uh, the styling significantly. The Magnum, the Dodge Magnum, I believe, is the same as well. Um, it's the same, same template, same bracket, uh, angle to pillar is the same and whatnot. So, the first thing I am going to do is pull off the trim on the interior. Now, we can start working it out from a corner and the whole thing should just pop off like that. You can see there's some of these uh, clips like this and then in here there's one clip that kind of looks like that. You can see it's a bit mangled from removing this but it, it snaps into here. And then to get this part out, you, or you push this tab and this thing slides right out like that. Okay, and now we can just remove the, uh, the piece over here. I'm probably gonna have to put that back on um, when the drill bit comes through just so that it, it pokes through the uh, the pillar trim properly and I, I know where to align it but other than that that's that's about it it should come through somewhere here we're just gonna want to be careful that it doesn't hit this uh, the strap for for the airbag and uh, any other clips other than that that's uh, that's about it so well, let's get started Okay, so this is either going to go very nicely or catastrophic. So, the template itself, uh, number 8548 from Unity, you can... The, the Unity website, they're, they're working on it, they're improving it. Um, so, the best way to get information is to send them an email and they'll get back to you pretty quick. That's what I did, and uh, they're, they're pretty good about that. And they emailed me the link to uh, to the template. I'd, I haven't found anywhere where you can search for it. Um, the only search result or the search query now is for the for the reverse search for the brackets and the vehicle uh, specifics. So looking at it, it says place it 10, 10 inches up from 
base of post and this along the, the edge of the windshield. So we're going to measure from here 10 inches up and that'll be the, the corner of the thing. Okay, so we got the uh, template printed or taped down with uh, some painting tape where you can use masking tape. And uh, we're going to go ahead and mark these two points where, where we're going to drill for the holes for the securing of the bracket. So one thing obviously I wanted to mention is that when if you're printing this, um, make sure that you print it properly, uh, meaning that you print it uh, actual size, not to scale or full page or something like that, otherwise it's, it's not going to come out in the right proportions. And obviously when you hold up the bracket to it, um, the holes should should line up like that. Now it says place along a post at windshield, I don't know if that means go over and touch the windshield or just along the edge of the post. But looking at it, if we put it like this, we do have some room to uh, to move it around. I don't want to go too close because on the other side it might not come out at the right uh, at the right point. Oh boy! Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Um, I guess the only thing we have left to do is drill the half-inch fucking hole and hope that this works out. So we'll mark these center points here. Now, what I'm going to do is screw this in with metal screws first in case it pulls while I'm while I'm drilling it instead of going right for the rib nuts. So we'll just drill out just a little bit. No going back now. So I'm going to take these metal screws and drill the bracket in. Okay, that's on there nice and tight. Oh boy. Okay, now for the fun part. Get this guy in. Nice and tight. Got a clean, fresh, brand new half inch bit. And we're gonna go for it. Now, we're gonna set our check so that it slips. And we'll be using everybody's favorite DW40 as a little bit of lubrication uh, for the drill bit. So, I don't think I'll film the whole thing because it's probably going to take a little while, but uh, hopefully we don't bust the windshield here or anything.
Okay, so we've got the hole going as far as it'll go with uh, this drill bit. Now, we have to switch to something a little bit longer so that it can go all the way through. And we have this here mighty Bush drill bit. And there's actually like three layers you have to go through. This first outer layer is just a, a very thin trim. And there's one in between that and then the final layer over here, this white uh, part over there. Finally. Right. Fucking through. Put the trim back on and drill right through that too. Put a, uh, a screw catcher bowl with uh, cloth on top to catch all the metal shavings. Which are left with after drilling the hole. I'm going to collect these shards and then install the rib nuts. Okay, so we drilled out a 9 30 seconds hole for the rivet nuts. We'll go ahead and apply those. Screw it on the tool here, just till the thread comes to the end, but enough that we can uh, we can grab it and get it started there. And you'll kind of feel it when it gives right there. You don't want to go too much because it'll uh, you want to over over crimp it. And then we just back it out like that, and it will not be going anywhere. And that's pretty much it. So we'll just take our Dremel over here and make a few little adjustments uh, where it kind of chowdered up a little. And do the same thing where it came through the trim here. We can even just take a little lighter and singe off the edge. Okay, so we've hit a little snag. So when I put the bracket on and I try to push the, uh, the spotlight in, the bushing isn't quite making it, which means the shaft is hitting upon something. And it's not the outer hole and it's not the inner hole. It's the, this uh, center piece here, that heavy, heavy gauge steel. So I have a little extended uh, Dremel bit, and I'm just kind of filing that down until I, until I work it out. On the shaft of the spotlight I've just drawn with a sharpie so that when I stick it in there I can see where it's scratching. Um, it's going to remove the marker and show me where I need to file down. So we'll go ahead and try it again. The rubber gasket. I have ordered a new rubber gasket. This is the one that came with it. But, uh, it's a little bit dried out. It's, it'll still work fine, but I'd prefer to, uh, to replace it altogether. Plus I think the current one is a, is a molded piece uh, made specific for this, where this just looks like a piece of cut rubber. And I suppose if you really wanted to, uh, you can just trace it on a piece of rubber and cut one yourself, but uh, you can just order a new one from Unity. So you can see that right there that I'm talking about, it should just slide in cleanly. We don't want to force it too much. Um, and that's because the shaft isn't is, is sticking on something, and we'll see on the sharpie where it's sticking. Okay, so we can kind of see a little bit along there, and a bit on the bottom. You can see it scratches when it hits the edge. So we'll make a few more minor adjustments. Okay, there we go. So we got it filed down to the point where uh, the shaft is no longer hitting on the inside of the uh, of the pillar. Now, as I say, that's the the sandwiched layer, the third one or the second one in the middle, not not this outer trim piece, and not the inner part. It was the, the thick steel piece in the middle that it was uh, hitting against, and you just got to go at it slowly, slowly with the Dremel, 
Uh, not too much because you don't want the, sh the shaft to have too much play. But um, the, the bushing should fit in there smooth. That's it. If you force it, you're just going to end up breaking uh, something. So really the name of the game with this is to just go slow and take your time in every little step, uh, no matter how long it takes, versus forcing something and breaking it. And the other thing I just did was drill a little hole above there and stuck a rubber grommet and that's where the wire is going to pass through. Now, as for wiring, in the police car they've already supplied a wire and it's clipped right up there. So we're going to use that for the power. Oh, here we go. Finally got the damn thing in. And it's dark. Took me the better part of three hours. It was not as easy as drilling a hole and putting it in. Um, where the shaft goes through, it kept hitting against the uh, inner part, the post. So I had to very carefully work that with the Dremel. As for the inside for the wiring, I passed right here through a little grommet. And I'm going to tuck this back up here. The wire is pulled nice and tight away from where the pillar airbag is. Uh, and there's actually a little channel in there, and you can see they give you to run that because when, when you're running things in your airbags and whatnot, you really want to have your thinking cap on because you don't want to be putting things in the way of that. Anyway, I chopped off that little connector that was like, I don't know what you'd call this, it was a little 2-pin AB connector. 26, that's the only number on it. 26 millimeter 2-pin, I don't know, whatever, it looks pretty standard, it only has one in there for power. I chopped it off because I don't have the other end of it, and I think this is a better way to secure it with uh, these things. So that's going to get tucked up under there, and that's really all there is to it. Um, the other thing that I haven't put on yet is that little rubber uh, wedge with the uh, with that clamp bushing. I have that coming in the mail along with the uh, a new seal, a rubber gasket for it, so we'll put those on. And of course the LED bulb. Um, what we have in here is the halogen bulb. And you can see it works very nicely. Okay, final daytime video. How it uh, turned out. Here's the uh, shaft. <laughs> shaft. It comes through the pillar. The wire I passed through the grommet, I put on the blue wire. Just unscrewed this back cap, two screws here, gives you access to the switch, unsoldered the uh, little wire. It comes with a black wire, I would just find the blue is a nice contrast. Still yet to put the little rubber grommet and retaining clip on it with the set screw. Pretty much just holds it uh, a little bit flush and keeps it from, from trying to walk out on you or anything like that, but it's fine, it's fine without it, it doesn't really, I think it's completely solid, there's no shakes or rattles with it. I, drove around with it last night and tested it out. Um, so you can see if we have the spotlight in more or less of a position where we want it to shine directly in front of us, the handle is totally clear of the steering wheel and you, you, your hand's not going to knock it. It's not near the dashboard or anything like that. Um, from where they tell you to put the template 10 inches up, you could go a little higher, I suppose, if you wanted to. It's not going to, to hit anything. You've got big gorilla knuckles for some reason, and you're worried about hitting it, and you like to drive like this for some reason. I suppose you could have put it a little bit higher. Um, moving the bracket a little bit more that way would, in turn, want to push the shaft this way. So if you bring it too close to the um, to the closer to the side of the door, it would make the handle go that way. If you bring it too close to the steering wheel, but this is exactly where they specify. Um, it should be drilled through, so it came out quite nice. See, we have full uh, degree of rotation, and if I go to close the door, you'll see that it, it stops there. That's as far as it'll go, and it's not going to hit the mirror. I can turn it around as well. Look at that. Perfect, perfect clearance. Perfect. Every time. Same thing if I turn it 
towards the windshield. Perfect clearance. It's not going to hit anything. So, I guess if you wanted to drive with it in a stored away position, that would be it. And the handle is just completely that way. So, if it's like that, then the handle is closer to the steering wheel, but you can still operate it. Um, that's pretty much it. Take a look at it from the outside. As I say, we're going to do away with this halogen bulb and put a uh, an LED. You can see the bracket sits just a little bit above the uh, plastic for the mirror bracket. Together, I must say, I'm quite pleased with it. Came out very well. And there's what it looks like finished. Has a bit of a cool reflection to it. The bulb is held in there nice. Had to trim the foam a bit, but. Holds it in there. Extremely, extremely bright. So here it is the Wayland LED bulb, two degree spotlight. So you can see it's pretty focused. It travels quite a ways. Good for spotting out deer and whatnot on the road. Turn my headlights off completely. That's just the spotlight. Get up away from the street light here. Okay, this is just the spotlight. Shine it up on a tree there. It's, uh, I don't know if it's brighter than the uh, halogen as much as just more focused. They, they do come in an 8 degree or a spot, but uh, I find this one is just very well focused. So that's what it is. It does kind of do the Batman thing up in the sky, especially now it's a bit raining, kind of see it going up there.